In the previous video for QuizMe, we set up our variables. Again, these are the variables for the demonstration app. Depending on the type of quiz, multiple choice, true, false, this is not the only way to do it. Um, so there's uh, really your app is variables are going to be dependent on what you chose to do for your quiz. But now that we have our variables all set up, we're going to go into the gameplay of this a little bit. And when our screen is initialized, because again, remember on our design screen, we don't have that image or that question that's loaded. So what we wanna do is come here and go to set our questions label. So we're gonna set that text on that label to select our list. So we're gonna select a list item. Now the list that we want because it's our question list, is our uh, question variable. So we're gonna get this, and we're going to get our uh, question list, and our index on that, meaning where we are in that list. That's what our index means. So where we are in this, this would be our first item, our second item, index three, index four. So we're going to uh, duplicate this really quick, and we're gonna set our image one, oh, I actually can't do that. So we'll just leave this little bit of code here. We're gonna set our image one and our image on the picture on that image. And we're going to select our items off our list. Well, obviously we don't want it to be off the global list. We want it to be off the picture list. And where do we want it? Well, we wanna get it from that indexed variable. Uh, so our current question index which reads one. We could substitute that value up here as well but I did want to show two ways of doing that. And this is again only on the screen initialized. So the next thing that we have is we have that next button. So we have our next button. What happens when we click our next button? Well, we have lots of things to think about here. We have that right or wrong label, right? We can set that right or wrong label, the text on that, to blank, because we're basically just clearing that label out. We also want to set our answer text, so we can duplicate this and go to our uh, answer uh, label. Which which would we call? Nope, I can't do that from here. I'm actually going to have to grab it from here. I apologize. So we're going to set our answer text. So we're going to clear out that little text box where the user inputs their answer. So we're basically just resetting from there. Now we need to set up our logic for this. And what we want to take a look at is if our global index list. So we're going to grab a math block. So if we get this global index list here, and if it equals the length of the list, so we're gonna come here, so in the length of the question list, we want to return our value to our global index to one. Now let me explain what we're going doing here. We're basically resetting our index value down to one. So when we get to our, the length of our list, let's say is four here, if I hit the next button again, it's gonna return the index label to one, which means our program, we're gonna program it to pull that question one. Now we also have to do some math here. Um, if it is not equal to one, or not equal to the length of the list, I should say, we need to add one onto that variable. So we're gonna get that global index variable and we're gonna add one to it. So when we click next, that means we're gonna to go to two on the list. So what we'll do is we'll program it to pull the second question based off of this index number now. 